presentation is earning crypto as a content creator. So I'd like to get an idea of who we've got in the audience here, who has a cryptocurrency wallet and has ever bought or sent any type of cryptocurrency at all, Bitcoin or Ethereum. Okay, so about half. So about half of you have not. Cool. Uh, well, welcome. <laughs> so one of the things that I hope you come away with from this presentation is that it, you don't have to be a nerd to use cryptocurrencies and steam it the highlight of this presentation is going to show you how people are using blockchains and crypto every day without having to know how it works. Basically how you drive a car or, or a motorcycle every day and you probably don't have a lot of idea of how it works internally. Um, so to give you a little background on me. My name is Ash Oro. I uh, got a couple engineering degrees. I was the former head of business development for an offshore bank. And I felt I have a podcast, Liberty Entrepreneurs Podcast, and I'm also uh, the founder of a virtual assistant business, Liberty Virtual Assistants, where I help digital entrepreneurs hire staff in the Philippines. Basically, uh, you know, we live in this digital world and it's very expensive and troublesome to hire domestic staff sometimes, especially if you're a, a young startup in the digital space and you don't have a lot of resources to spend towards staffing. And I help people do that. And my latest project which Trish is a part of. It's called Steam Smarter, and we'll get into that a little bit later. But it's a blockchain analytics and reporting bot for the Steam software, for the Steam platform. So as a content creator myself, I created my podcast early on without the idea of cash flowing it. I thought maybe if I can just build a platform, build my audience, build some authority and credibility, I can have that audience to build on top of later and hopefully have some services, maybe some eBooks, maybe some courses, uh, webinars, stuff like that, masterminds that I can upsell people if they find what I'm doing valuable and I can start offering auxiliary products to the community that I've built. It always troubled me. I always found that I would create these podcasts and for a while it was every week and sometimes even twice a week and I could see myself like starting to drift away from it because there wasn't that direct financial incentive. And so I hired a virtual assistant to help me out so I wasn't spending 10, 20 hours a week. But I still noticed that I would, you know, I would slack a little bit because just there were other things that I could do that would be directly financially suitable for me rather than, you know, create this podcast. That's only a derivative of the finances. And at the time I was working at the bank and I didn't want to work at the bank anymore. So I was like, okay, a podcast is going to be my way out. And you know, it, it was a, a very long process. I tried to get sponsorships and it just didn't really work that well. So it got me thinking like, what were the reasons that I couldn't create any revenue from my podcast? And a couple things, algorithms, Facebook algorithms. How many people are content creators here? Okay. Again, about half, you know, algorithms on social media will block you or they'll make it difficult for people to see even your community, even people that like your page to see your content. So I was getting like 5% views from my content. I would have like, you know, a thousand followers on my page and like 50 people or 25 people would see my post. I'm like, man, I work all this hard to produce these podcasts and nobody sees them. Also, a new way to build your community. I was like, there's got to be a better way. I need more engagement. How can I reclaim my content's value? And, you know, I'm going to talk about some criticisms and competition in this blockchain uh, social media space. All right. So why can't you get paid? Again, the algorithms hide your content. Uh, upvotes are nearly worthless. Okay. Yeah. They make you smile and it may give your content a bit more priority in the algorithms, but overall upvotes aren't worth that much. You got limited ways to give back to your audience. I mean, what, maybe you can run a contest or maybe you can mention someone in an article or, or a podcast, but you know, what does that really give that person, that audience member of yours and the platform owners or the middlemen take most of your profits. And for me, whenever I see people posting on YouTube and have 20,000 followers, but they're making 200 bucks a month, you know, something seems a little bit off there. All right. So algorithms versus you. All social media networks have algorithms, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Google Plus. I don't anybody use Google Plus anymore, but um, you have to like figure out their algorithms and they're always changing. And you're like always trying to hack algorithms. It's kind of similar to SEO, right? You're trying to hack these algorithms and figure out how do I get my content seen? And 
that takes up a lot of mental space. Like I, I want to be producing content, not figuring out the behind the scenes, what Facebook and Twitter are doing to, to try to like hack that little system to get my stuff to the top. So my community who's already like liking and upvoting me can actually see it. The content's also owned by, by the platform. And when you post on Facebook, you don't own that content. You don't own that post. They own that post and they can do with it whatever they want. They can try to promote it. They can not promote it. They could bury it. They can highlight it. They can do whatever they want. So they own you basically. And I think that's a big problem because I own my content and I want to do with my content what I want. And I want to get rewarded for it rather than the content, uh, the platform producers, the platform creators, Facebook and these big businesses making the majority of what the value that I put out there. Blockchains are open source, censorship free and decentralized. This is the opposite of the current social media landscape that we've got right now. It's up to you how the content is displayed. And I'll get into that a little bit later, what I mean by how, why and how it's up to you. But the most important thing here is that blockchains are open source for pretty much any blockchain out on the market right now available. You can download the entire source code and go in and see every single bit of it. Imagine what Facebook would say if you came to them and you were like, hey, let me see your algorithms and exactly how you're promoting or not promoting or burying my content. They'd be like, get out of here. What are you talking about? This is my IP. Well, there is the IP doesn't exist in the blockchain space. It's censorship free meaning just like Bitcoin censorship censorship free anyone that wants to send Bitcoin it doesn't matter your race your color your creed you know where you were born what religion you are how poor you are rich you are it doesn't matter if if you can send, if you have Bitcoin you can send Bitcoin and nobody can tell you no it's completely censorship free and open source so let's just give a little example real quick uh, so this is steamit.com this is probably uh, the most popular website for blockchain-based social media. This is the one I still use every day, but if you get on there, you may notice that it says it's still in beta, which it's been in beta for a year and a half as a software developer. That's a little bit silly, but it doesn't have a lot of the, the niceties or the user-friendly experience that some like other centralized types of platforms have, uh, Facebook and stuff like that. But just keep in the back of your mind that this is really, really new, right? Bitcoin itself came out and blockchains themselves came out in 2009. And then Steam, it came out in 2016. So it hasn't even been around for two years yet. So remember back in your head, whenever you first started getting on the internet back in maybe 1995, 1996, that's about where we are right now relative to blockchain social media. So just, just remember that. But you can see here that, you know, these are users. This is how long ago they posted. I think I took this yesterday. You know, this is the title Steam Press now available for WordPress.org plug in. So people are building, entrepreneurs are building on top of this platform and making it more extendable for, for content creators like us to more easily use it. But it takes time. Now I'm going to go through a couple more iterations of front ends. And what I mean by front end is how many of you are familiar with the concept of a blockchain or just, just any type of like how a blockchain stores data? All right. So it's like a database, right? It's like a database that you'd have on or a big Excel spreadsheet, but anyone in the world can like look into it. So it's a decentralized spreadsheet, basically a decentralized database. Whenever you submit content to a social media blockchain like Steam, you're storing it into basically a database and anyone can build a website that can look into that database and display that content in any way that they want to. Just think about it this way. Think if if Facebook was open source, you could create, let's say, Ashbook, but display the contents of Facebook however you want. Well, you can't do that because Facebook is very closed source software. They don't open up their APIs for people to do that. This is where things get really interesting. So pay attention to this title right here, Steam Press, now available for WordPress.org. This is another front end for Steam. So Steam is the blockchain and Steam it, very confusing. Steam it is the first like website that was able to display the contents of the blockchain. This is another one, it's called busy.org. You'll see the same thing here, Steam Press now available in the WordPress.org plugin. It's the same post. It's just displayed 
on a different website in a different way that could be curated differently and displayed differently for your audience, right? Maybe this isn't the format that your audience likes. Maybe they're more graphic designers or image related people and they, they, they appreciate more imagery. Maybe they're, you know, nerds and they like a bunch of text and they like things looking like Reddit or, I mean, not Reddit, but Drudge Report or something that's just very text based. You could do that as well. It provides customizable front ends for people to curate content in a way that appeals to their audience. And this is something that we haven't really had before because up to this point, a website meant a database, right? A website had a database and that website displayed the contents of that database however they wanted. But with a blockchain social media system, the content is the content, it's raw content in the blockchain itself, and then you decide how you want to display it check this out this is called DTube the D stands for decentralized this is basically a YouTube that is run on top of the steam blockchain all right you can upload your files to this website rather than uploading it to YouTube and guess what nobody's gonna t YouTube doesn't take a cut of the money that you make here all right you get to interact directly with your audience and you get to do it by putting it on a blockchain so it's censorship free. So these files are stored on hundreds, if not thousands of nodes, computers, r servers running around the world. Where if YouTube, owned by Google, if they don't like your content, guess what? You get shut down or it gets removed. Or, or you, This, there is no shut you down. So if you hold beliefs that are counter to possibly your government's, or a faction of people, or somebody is out there that doesn't like what you're talking about, somebody powerful doesn't like what you're talking about, they can petition YouTube to get that stuff torn down. They can't do that here because nobody owns the content. The content is distributed around the world. So how are you going to go and delete content off of a thousand computers at the same time? Right? You can't do it. And this is one of the best things about a distributed or blockchain based social media. And I know that the name of the presentation is how you make crypto and we'll get to that soon. But I want to give you guys a little bit of background, like the foundation of why this is so groundbreaking and evolutionary in my opinion. So let's see another example. So this is called D sound. I'm sure everyone's familiar with, um, uh, SoundCloud, right? Where you can upload your audio. I upload my podcasts there. But again, it's centralized. If, if SoundCloud doesn't like what you're posting or somebody complains to them about what you're posting, they can rip it down, right? They can remove it as if it never existed. You're dependent on some big corporation somewhere with their servers that you have no access to to be nice enough to you to host your content. Well, guess what? We don't need them anymore because we do peer-to-peer. -peer. We do everything peer-to-peer -peer now. This is a decentralized SoundCloud built on top of the steam blockchain all right and this is one more this is one of my personal favorites somebody created a steam front end just for memes right solely for memes and it's called dmania.lol and i freaking love it it shows you like how niche you can get down to displaying just the type of content you want and i, I just want i want to show you guys this because it's it's actually legitimate here like th this is it live right now, right? This is, now you can see it's super simple interface, but people are posting cdmany.lol. They're posting memes and literally getting paid for it. I mean, this guy, look, $83. It shows you how small this space is right now. There's just not that many memes. Nobody's using this stuff. So the people using it are getting paid, right? So we've got some little animation and I hope it loads up of a monkey chasing a banana. And the payouts are 83 bucks, right? So it, it shows you how you can curate content specifically for your audience. So this is the last example I'll show you. This is called dlive.io. And I think we're on dlive.io right now. It's the first time I've been using it, actually. This is kind of like Facebook Live or Twitch. I don't know if you guys are gamers, but um, we are streaming live and writing to the Steam blockchain right now um, at streaming video and audio. And you can see that people, and I haven't, this isn't a live site. So this is just a screenshot. That's why it says nothing's live right now. Otherwise we would be up there, but you can see people have uh, uploaded videos. People have done streaming 
And so it's just another way to display the type of content that you want to display for your community without having to get anyone's permission. So how do you reclaim your content's value? As we said, traditional social media, the platform creators control both the finances and your content. There's no way for you to monetize your content on these social media sites without going through and getting the approval of these guys, right? And that's what blockchain-based social media is changing. They profit directly from the money that you make by taking a cut and selling your data, right? Let's take an example of Patreon. You know, this is what a lot of content creators use, and it's, it's really good. Of course, Patreon takes a cut. But it also creates the barrier, the hurdle of people having to sign up, get out their credit card, enter their details, or sign up with PayPal or something. As a content creator, we want it to be as easy as possible for our audience to support us. I think this is a new way of building community. And now upvotes on traditional social media do establish importance and relevance and social significance but they don't offer any financial reward. And I know everybody's wondering, how, where's the financial reward paying for? Is this a Ponzi scheme? It's difficult to give back to your audience. Maybe you could, like I said, maybe you could call them out and be like, hey, thanks Bob Smith for upvoting every single podcast that I ever put out and commenting. I really appreciate you. I'm gonna give you a shout out in my next podcast. But what if you could like his comment, Bob's comment, and give him a dollar of cryptocurrency where he can cash out, right? Or that he could reinvest in the platform and increase his influence or authority in that community. Since we have peer-to-peer -peer money, we get to bypass the big banks. And as a previous offshore banker myself, it is my mission to end the banking system as we know it. Because I built it. Right. I was there. I was the guy shutting down your account because I didn't like the way that you wrote an email or the or how you didn't offer an invoice or a contract to me expressing exactly how much money somebody was sending you, who was sending it, why they were sending it and the goods and service rendered for that payment. I was the guy that said, no, you, you're not allowed to receive this money or you're not allowed to send this money. Well, that's crap. And now we don't have to do that anymore because we've got peer-to-peer -peer money. We get to bypass the banks, which allows us to introduce micropayments for votes. You can enable voting, like we were talking about, enable voting on your own website. And soon on the Steemit blockchain, you can launch your own token. So with Liberty Entrepreneurs, I could launch the Liberty token if I wanted. And yet it doesn't have value at first because nobody accepts it. Right? Nobody cares about it. But if I'm able to create value through my podcast, through this community, and through the content that I create, then all of a sudden there's going to be demand for my token, and I create my own little economy. Maybe I sell Liberty Entrepreneur shirts, and I accept my own token for it, or sponsorships for my show, and I accept my own token for it. Over time, those tokens have value that people are willing to spend, and basically you created your own money that way. Remember, all value is just subjective. Everything has value because we think as humans that it has value. I used to be a big gold and silver bug, right? Gold and silver were free market money. It was how the people were going to get out of this old banking system and how we were going to achieve monetary freedom, separation of the state and money. But it, the argument was always, well, if there was a ton of gold on Mars, how much would it be worth? And it really spun me. And I was like, well, it wouldn't be worth anything because you couldn't do anything with it. Same thing about these tokens. They only have value because we as society say and think they have value. All right, so here's just uh, a couple examples of some of the podcasts that I have uploaded um, to Steam, to Steam it. You know, this is about creating passive income with cryptocurrency. This is just a quote card that I pull out from this guy's interview with me. And I, I cash these out, right? This is real money. I, I sold the cryptocurrency after the cash out day and we actually popped bottles of champagne with it. And it was a lot of fun, right? But just to like to prove specifically to Trish that this is real because I was trying to get her on board for a new Steam bot that I'm trying to build. And she was like, okay, yeah, sure, that's money. But it's like money on the platform. Like, what can we really do with it? And I was like, well, we can buy a couple bottles of champagne with it. Let's cash it out. And we found somebody who wanted to buy cryptocurrency and we converted this steam to Bitcoin and Ethereum and we sold that for cash in Chiang Mai, Thailand for Thai bot and went to the market 
and balled out for a little bit, right? Just as like proof that this this happens, that the whole circle, there's not any missing links. So these are comments. These are some comments from some of my audience on my on my post. And so now this person comments on every single post that I put up there. And I wonder why. Because I, I don't even know if this is a guy or a girl. I think he or she's from Canada, but maybe French Canada because their English isn't the best. But you can see that all of a sudden this person commented on my post and I appreciate it so much that I upvoted them for a dollar fourteen cents. And then people start upvoting me, right? And it's like, I'm sure you're thinking right now, oh, this is definitely funny money, right? You're just upvoting each other and you're giving each other money. Like, how in the hell does that work? Imagine what you can do to build an audience. Let's just assume right now that it's not a Ponzi scheme. And we're going to talk about the financials here in a minute. Just assume that it works for now, okay? Imagine what you can do as a content creator if you're able to upvote someone, comment on your post and pay them out, right? Pay them out where they get this in their wallet, and I'll show you an example of my wallet in a minute, are they more or less likely to follow you and start engaging on your content and keep coming back than if you couldn't pay them out, right? We've introduced a, fi a peer to peer financial system within social media. And that's, that's the revolutionary aspect here. New steam gets created every day. The question is, who does it get paid out? to and how do we how do we allocate it well in steam you allocate it by thumbing people up by upvoting people and you also get it by sharing by commenting right let me give you an example let's say that north korea you know a, bit, a big fear right now in the united states and i haven't been there in about a year but a big fear right now is that north korea is going to launch a missile right and aimed at la or something well okay let's just say it happens let's say it happens Somebody's going to, and somebody's living in North Korea or South Korea, and, and they like they hear this. Maybe they work for the government. They hear like, "Hey, this is going to happen," and they post it on Steam it because if they post it on regular social media, they, they it would be censored and be taken down. Well, on Steam it, it can't do that, right? But what happens is this: this is going to go viral, most likely. This post is probably going to go viral, and if you share or if you comment or if you upvote a post really early on, that's going to go viral. Well, you get rewarded with curation rewards because it incentivizes people to find what will be high quality in demand content. You find it early and then you get rewarded for finding that early and start spreading that information. Right. And so in the Steam blockchain, people who create content and people who curate content are are given that new steam currency as it's created every day so instead of just giving it to some miners who are faceless we don't even know who they are now the incentive to pay out goes to the content creators and the curators so every day when the new steam currency gets created we the content creators and the members who are engaging in that online blockchain based social media society or community we're the ones receiving the benefit now, a question, what happens whenever there's X amount of money in a system and new money gets introduced into that system, gets added to that system? What happens to the existing money? Devalued. Yeah, it's devalued, right? Exactly, it's devalued. And so theoretically, that would be what's happening. And that's what's happening to the Thai bot in your pot. Well, we don't have Thai bot here. The Rupia, right? That's what's happening to the rupia in your pocket right now. The more money that the government prints, theoretically, the less value your, your money has in your pocket. Why this doesn't have, why, why the value can still go up while new money is introduced to the system is because the value being created is enticing more people to buy the currency. So more people are putting money into the system right now to over to counteract and offset the new money the new steam being created if no new money came into the steam currency and they continue to inflate or add new currency to the system yes the money would depreciate in value but this is common to every currency that we know even gold even new gold is being mined every year and so more capital has to find its way into the gold market specifically to keep the value even stable 
If more demand comes in for the steam currency, just like for gold or for silver, then the price can stay either stable or even rise in value. So there's a couple of different currencies in steam, and I'm not going to get into the technicals of it, but think about it as there is the base currency, steam. There's another currency called steam dollars, which ideally mat matches one to one uh, with the U.S. dollar. So theoretically, one steam dollar, and this is done by some very interesting economics, um, one steam dollar is worth one U.S. dollar at least. Right now, one steam dollar is a lot of people that are speculating on these steam dollars and they bid up the price. Right now, they're about three dollars a piece. Right, um, but one steam dollar will be at least worth one dollar. Give you, a, it gives you a bit of stability because the price of steam has been everything from fifteen cents to eight dollars. The price of steam dollars has never dropped below. It's maybe been ninety-seven cents, but it, but because of the way it's created, because of the economic model behind it, it continues to be around at least a dollar. And then there's, and you get paid out steam dollars and steam whenever you post. Okay, and I'll show some examples of this. There's another one called Steam Power, and this is the this is the interesting one for me. Steam Power is basically when you commit your Steam currency to the community, and what that means is you put it in for a time period, and you say, "I'm going to be a content creator on this platform, and I'm going to show you that I'm committed to this community," and it basically shows your commitment and your authority to the platform in the community and for potential audience members. Whenever you power up your Steam, you're basically staking it for a 13-week period. But what, what you get in return is it increases your vote's worth. So if you have, you always start out with like one or two or three Steam power and your upvote's worth like one penny. Then if you start, you can buy Steam and, and power it up or you can just make Steam by being a content creator and power it up your vote could then be worth four cents or five cents or a dollar, right? And I'll show you some examples of this. But at any time, you can say, I no longer agree with what this community stands for, and I'm going to power down all of my steam, and I'm going to take that value somewhere else, right? It's all voluntary. Okay, so here is, this is, this is an example of a wallet. And you can see that there's Steam, Steam Power, and Steam Dollars. And you can see over here that this person has 394 Steam. That could be powered up. But remember, th this is a currency that you can send. I, I could send, if, if one of you guys built a website for me or something and cost me $1,000, I could send you Steam and pay in Steam if you would accept it. Maybe you don't. Otherwise, I could send this out and convert it to Bitcoin, convert it to Ethereum, convert it to any coin that you wanted and just be in the digital crypto economy. This is steam that has been powered up or basically locked up. They're like influence tokens. Influence tokens which give you more control over post payouts and allow you to earn more on curation rewards. Okay, well, this is my wallet. <laughs> Part of Ash Oro's steam power is currently delegated away. That basically means that I could have that influence, but I've decided to share that influence with other people to help them become a, a bit more influential so they can upvote their community they can better build their community because honestly i don't need all this steam power right because this upvote's worth maybe you know 10 11 12 dollars so i've delegated away some to our bot steam smarter because we want to build an audience and right now we don't have any steam and so our upvote's worth like less than a penny but i delegated a couple thousand steam to us steam power to us and now our upvote's worth about 50 cents so now we have something to give back to our community that's growing and then steam dollars again you get paid out in steam dollars for your post it's the liquid asset um, a little side note here a steam savings account this is really interesting and i think this is this is one thing that really attracted me to this platform is it, it's a three-day withdrawal period basically a lot of people get hacked a lot of bitcoiners get hacked and they instantly get their bitcoin sent out never to be seen again right if your steam account got hacked well even if so i could put you know all the steam in my savings account even if you got hacked 
they would have to power it down for three days in your savings account. And so that would give me, you know, 72 hours to try to figure out like, holy shit, I've been hacked. I've got to like figure out what to do. Oh, but at least my cryptocurrency isn't instantly gone like in almost every other blockchain. This gives me a couple days to like catch my breath and try to figure out what the best opportunity I have to protect my assets. Whereas this just isn't available in, in other blockchains. So I'll just take you to the website right now. So this is the live feed right now. So you, so here's like your little icon. You just come down here to your wallet and you, you know, this is kind of like your, your dashboard of your steam account. And this is your number of followers. Oops. How many posts you've got. Right. And this is, it's a little bit off centered here, but this is where all of your information is. This is, you know, I could, I could power this up and increase my ability to influence where the new steam is being allocated, right? The more steam power you have, the more influence you have. Um, buy, sell, transfer to savings. I could transfer it. So you can see down here, as you, as you spend time on the system, as you curate, as you comment, as you upvote, you get rewarded. Yeah, it's not much, but you know, it just automatically goes into your wallet. So uh, yeah, it, these are literally all my transactions. It's a very transparent and open type of blockchain. These are, this is a really cool website called steamworld.org. And since steamit.com isn't really being developed very, very actively right now, people are tapping into the blockchain and pulling out all this information and building user interfaces around it, right? Just like you can build a new user interface to submit new posts, you can also create user interfaces to display the information that's stored in the blockchain, account data, post data, right? Tag data. This was, uh, I took this yesterday, I think, and this shows you I had 80.64% of my voting power. So the more you vote, your little, your power goes down, just like in a video game. And then like you eat some mushrooms or something and you get recharged. Okay, maybe not. But over time, you can see in 23 hours, 13 minutes, I'll be back at 100% voting power. And so as you vote, 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 the value of your vote goes down. I think if I was at 100% voting power, this would be worth about $2.64 or maybe $3 or something. And if I just kept voting, it would come down here and eventually it'd be worth nothing. You know, it, it gives that gamification aspect. So if I have a lot of steam, I just can't go and abuse it and just keep voting full, you know, full steam for all of my friends. And over time, it, it degrades, right, in purchasing power and in, in, in value. This is the same website, just a different module of that website. This is one post that I wrote a couple of days ago. I recently did uh, a presentation in Chiang Mai on Steam and BitShares and the EOS blockchain. And you can see this is what people, people upvoted me. And this is the, the, val the amount that they upvoted me and the power. So you can choose, like, I want to give you a 100% upvote. I want to give you a 5% upvote. Yeah, you're pretty good. I'll give you a 50% upvote. This person gave me a hundred percent full up vote and it was for $24. He was this much of the total payout, right? The person, John Smith, I have no clue who these people are, by the way, they're just voting me up. John Smith, old John Smith, uh, also gave me a hundred percent up vote and his is worth $7 and 70 cents. And you can see like what people are giving me. This person only thought it was worth 10% of her up vote, Erica Harris. I do know her, which was worth 26 cents. <laughs> All right, maybe I need to ask her why she doesn't like what I'm doing. But um, yeah, I just find that really interesting. I mean, not only are, do I know these people like what I'm doing, but I can see in a number value, a price, how much they think I'm worth, maybe? How much my post is worth? I don't know. Okay, here's a little hack for you. If you do get on Steam, we have things called auto voters. And so if there's someone that you just really appreciate and constantly find value in what they're producing, you can, you can go to steamauto.com free service and you can give somebody an auto vote. So every time that person posts, even if you're on vacation or you don't get on steam for a while, you, you auto vote them to the percentage. And I think this guy, Fabio from Germany, he's a really cool guy. Um, I want to give him a hundred percent upvote every time he posts something on steam. And this is the way that I'm able to do that. All right, so how do you get started? Uh, sign up for an account on steamit.com. 
I've already heard one person say that she tried to create an account a couple of days ago, and this is one of the major criticisms right now. Um, how the system, how the Steam system works, you have to be delegated a small amount of Steam power just to be able to post, right? Um, and that really slows down the account creation process. But if you go to speed up the process, you can go to anon.steam.network. It's a website that, yep. So, but basically, you have to either um, since you're not, since you need to have some steam power in order to have access to the network and you're, you don't want to wait the couple days for like once a week or something, it goes and distributes all the new steam power to the new accounts. You can pay in Bitcoin or Litecoin or steam currency if you have it and basically front yourself that steam power to get your account created instantly. I think it costs like two steam or something. I think they charge five, five steam, but then you get three steam in your account as steam power afterwards so you're paying essentially to steam for it but you can pay in bitcoin and litecoin so you go to steamit.com or anon.steam.network get signed up uh and start blogging figure out you know find your voice if you have content that you've already created repurpose some of it you know it's not really frowned upon as long as it's your original content and there are bots that run on steam that will search your content and, and do Google searches and see if you're ripping someone off or copyright, you know, going against copyright or plagiarizing someone. And it'll literally post in there like, this is plagiarized content. We found it here on CNN.com, for instance. So, you know, you know, in high school, they always told us we had to be like so diligent about not copying somebody's content. And whereas in the real world, not in the educational world, uh, bots just do it for us. Right. So if you're out there schmoozing somebody else's content, then you're going to get caught and you're going to start getting downvoted and you're not going to realize any rewards out of that content you stole. So remember, Steam was just the first blockchain based social media, kind of like MySpace. And there's quite a few criticisms and there's going to be competition, um, as we would expect in the marketplace. But the initial mining caused a couple very influential wells, people that own a million Steam. You know, their accounts are worth several million dollars. If you receive an upvote from them, it could be worth hundreds of dollars, maybe two or three or four, five hundred, a thousand dollars just for a single upvote. So a lot of people, you know, try to find out what these wells want and write what they're hungry for. But this isn't necessarily a good thing but because it centralizes the power a bit. But that's how this system was created. In the future, there's going to be many other social media, uh, blockchain-based social media outlets, that platforms that don't have this problem. Remember, this was the first. Rarely is the first rendition the best. I mean, I don't know who's still using Windows 95, right? But also knowing what topics you, you can write about and then figuring out what the community wants and writing about those topics. For instance, if you're an animal lover, you could write about dogs, rabbits, and cats, but maybe people want to read about cats most often. Well, right now, there's not a really good way to figure that out until we release Steam Smarter, and then we'll show you what's the most in demand. Uh, some competitors, so other social media platform, uh, blockchain social media platforms, yours.org is one, but you act, when you thumb somebody up, when you upload someone there, it actually takes money from you. So you have to fund your account. It's not paid out out of inflation. There's another one called Library, um, which is similar to Steam, but much smaller community, which they are more academic based. Um, there's you own your own work org. Basically, this is the Chinese fork or clone of Steam. And then Golos.io, which is the Russian clone of Steam. Uh, I don't know what Golos means. So here's just a shameless plug for Steam Smarter. This is currently we're in beta. And this is basically we run daily reports to try to help you figure out who's getting paid out and where the engagement is. So you can see on this day, February the 6th, the best tag to use was Beyond Bitcoin. I don't know what this tag is. I've never even read a Beyond Bitcoin post, but it was paying out on average $85.52 per post. And you can see we go down and we rank these. Uh, we also look for average vote payout, meaning the, the power of the vote when somebody upvotes you. The average upvote for dsound-rock was worth $5.88. And in the tag community news, the average comment was getting paid out $1.23. So that's where the money's flowing to. 
This is the engagement. This shows you that uh, Korea dash travel. There were 12.68 on average comments for every post, and that was the highest, right? So that had the most comment engagement per post on the platform for that day, February the 7th. The tag Spanish had 50, over 52 votes per post, so a lot of people were upvoting Spanish that day. And then Travel had over 2,000 unique users within the last 24-hour period to just to show you where the excitement is and where people are hanging out. And again, we, we rank these uh, with, a, with a score that we've developed as well as you know, break out the post, post per vote, some of that stuff to try to help you like see where's the money and where are people hanging out. And just yesterday, I saw that Engadget, you know, a really big um, tech outlet, has joined Steam. You know, they have 1.6 million followers on Facebook, and they just decided that Engadget is now on Steam. It, and so they, you know, the weird, weird world of functional blockchain social networks, right? I anticipate that a lot more people, a lot more of these established media outlets are going to come over to Steam because who doesn't want to give back in a new way to their community? So let's wrap it up here. In my opinion, blockchain is changing the social media landscape for good. I don't think it will ever be the same. I think 10 years from now, the majority of social media platforms are going to be not only on a blockchain for censorship resistance, but also for token payouts. Uh, we're removing the middleman. We're not dependent on the platform owners anymore, the gatekeepers of our content. You get to connect directly with your audience and reward them back for the, for the value that they give you for all the downloads and the views and the shares. And you get to give and receive crypto rewards, which is great. A lot of people don't know how to buy cryptocurrency. Either their bank shuts them down or it's difficult or their government like here, you know, it's frowned upon. Well, here you can just like create content and make cryptocurrencies and tell those guys to screw off. So, all right, that's it, guys. If you want to stay connected on Twitter, I'm at Ash underscore Oro. You can scan these with your phones and subscribe to my podcast or download this presentation, and I'll take some questions. Thank you, everyone.